In the last video, we discussed how exercise and activity can lead to unpredictable blood glucose results for individuals with type 1 diabetes. In this video, we'll introduce some strategies for exercising with T1D and how to prepare for it. The American Heart Association recommends that children should participate in at least 60 minutes of activity per day. This includes children with diabetes. Children can be unpredictable when it comes to physical activity and exercise. They may not know how long they plan to play or how intense their activity level will be. Anyone caring for a child with T1D should be prepared to give them additional carbs depending on the child's age, size, and the intensity and duration of the activity. It's vitally important to monitor blood glucose frequently during exercise to avoid dropping low. Whenever possible, we recommend prepping for activity by following these steps before the activity begins. Always check the child's blood glucose level before activity. If the blood glucose is between 90 and 300, it is okay to exercise. Each child has a unique blood glucose level where they will be safe exercising with less risk of hypoglycemia. Your diabetes care team can help you establish this exercise target. If the blood glucose is higher than 300, you will need to check for ketones. If ketones are negative, it is okay to exercise. If ketones are positive, you should treat the ketones and avoid exercising. In general, we recommend eating a small amount of carbs before beginning any activity to avoid dropping low if the blood glucose is below the exercise target. The amount of carbs that is recommended depends on the current blood glucose and the length and intensity of the activity. This chart shows how the carb recommendations change according to the blood glucose, intensity, and length of exercise. We recommend using a healthy source of carbs like an apple, whole wheat toast, cheese and crackers, or a granola bar. Insulin pump users may be able to avoid eating an extra snack before starting an activity by lowering their basal rate or by increasing their blood glucose target in the pump settings during the activity. Some pumps even have exercise features built in to assist with insulin dosing. Your diabetes care team will be able to help with these settings. During exercise and activity, we recommend following these guidelines. Check the blood glucose during activity around every 30 to 60 minutes. If the blood glucose goes below the exercise target, then give 15 grams of carbs without insulin to avoid dropping low. Each individual's target is personal, and it may be different depending on the activity they are participating in. You could give fruit like apples, oranges, or bananas, or small amounts of a sports drink, around 8 ounces, to keep blood glucose up during the activity. Have the child drink plenty of water during exercise to stay hydrated. After the activity has ended, we recommend these steps. Check the blood glucose level again soon after the activity has finished to learn how the blood glucose responded to the activity. If the result is a high blood glucose, wait a short period of time before correcting it, just in case the high is temporary. You may also need to adjust how you cover carbs. Some people may need to give less insulin while covering carbs after an activity to help raise blood glucose back to target range. The body is more sensitive to insulin after exercising, so the same amount of insulin may be stronger than normal after activity. Keep drinking water to stay hydrated. Continue checking the blood glucose regularly, since the blood glucose can continue to drop up to 24 hours after the activity. At bedtime, there are several steps that must be followed to avoid hypoglycemia overnight. Check the blood glucose level again at bedtime. If it is less than the bedtime target blood glucose, give additional carbs. If your child had a lot of exercise, you may need to adjust your bedtime target blood glucose to be higher than normal. Talk with your diabetes care team to find the target that works best for you. You may need to check the blood glucose again overnight, around 2 or 3 a.m., to be sure that the blood glucose has not dropped. Although it may seem like extra work, these steps are the best way to ensure an individual with T1D remains healthy during and after exercise. 
Remember, every individual's experience will be different, and even different exercises can cause different reactions in a person with T1D. With time and experience, these steps will feel automatic and come with ease. In the next module, we'll talk about another tricky situation to tackle with T1D. Sick days.